It's like flippers, like a dolphin. <laughs> Welcome everybody back to the channel. I'm Brendan. Thanks for joining me here at Just Plain Crazy. In this cut down episode, we're going to go through and show you how to mechanically match your elevators and how to sync them using the high tech programmer. Now, this process will repeat itself if you want to on ailerons as well as we go through this build. The importance of doing this is to get a very neutral or good flying plane mechanically. We don't want to build it poorly and then try and tune it all out with the radio. We want everything to be even and symmetrical mechanically so it takes very little trim. In the case of what you just saw previously in that clip, that waterfall maneuver, the plane didn't snap out. That's one of the two maneuvers that in elevators that you can really see if somebody has mismatched elevator throws because the plane will want to roll out of both of those. So with that being said, let's get right to it. I hope you guys enjoy this. So here's what I did with the horizontal stabs just to show you guys before we go ahead and epoxy things in. Number one with your control horns. Before your fiberglass control horns go in, they need to be sanded up. I used some 40 grit and took all of the sheen off of there and roughed everything up on all the edges and the insides so the epoxy has somewhere to grab. I used, and you could have used the ball link here, I just used, uh, chose to use a plastic spacer that I had. So I know that this horn is as lined up as it can be at the top. And then what I did, I masked off the area around so I can create my epoxy fillets. So it comes up and around the side here a little bit, just to give it some extra strength and seal those off. But because your horns can vary, you want your horns to be perfect on this hinge line. And most models we don't pay a lot of attention to, but this one can go as far as from being right on to being really far off. And then depending when you go to change your horns, not only is it coming up and down, um, if you want to go to change that hole in that horn, but it's also rolling back. The whole goal is here is to make this side as perfectly symmetrical as I can to that side. I want the servos in the right spots with the arms at the right spots. Um, with the linkage at the right spots and all of my linkages should be the same and where it starts is getting these pivot points exactly on center line then my linkage is the same and then finally I'll program center and then I will program endpoints and make them match for um, the deflection on these elevator halves. So we're going to do the mechanical stuff, then we'll do the programming last, and then we should have very little to set up in the radio. You don't want to try and fix all your problems in the radio. You want to fix them while you're building it. So what I designed here is a little jig to find center. It's just a piece of triangle stock that's going to sit perfectly on the hinge line. This little indicator pin goes from dead center. I made a mark in the center to straight out the top of the other side so I know that the pin is straight. And once I have this thing, we'll eyeball it up here for you. That's good. Get that thing set right there on the hinge. So that tape is just going to help hold it in place. And then I use my indicator pin here to push this as I glue it in. I can just push this and find center. And then when that glue dries, I know that I'm exactly center on that hole. And that's what I want. So um, we're going to go ahead and get to epoxying both of these and see what happens. All right, guys, we are going to start discussing elevator servo matching. Now you're going to see why setting the horns, and if you remember back earlier, we used this little gizmo right here to make sure that everything on the horn side was absolutely centered and perfect with the hinge line. So that's what we use that for. Now that we know that all of our mechanical linkages 
are the same, we're going to electrically go ahead and center and program these. And we are going to use, if I can bring you more into adjustment here. We are going to use the HFP30 from Hitech as a programmer. First thing you're going to need is a battery to power it up. I use a receiver battery, a six volt. We're going to go ahead and plug that into the programmer. The servos that we are using in this are the, um, if I can grab one here, the uh, HSB's 9381THs. These things are titanium gear servos, high voltage at almost 500 inch pounds of torque. And if you go up to 7.2, they increase in um, speed as well, which is um, super high for a servo and why I spent the money to go with these. I've already put a linkage on here and hooked up both ends and I have a servo screw in here and I wanna caution you right here. When you set center and end adjustments, you have to be extremely careful what you're doing if you're hooking up the linkage because it's easy to flip the servo if you go nuts on this dial right here on the pulse dial and you can absolutely crush the surface that um, you're working with with this servo. So most of the time high tech is going to tell you get an idea where you want to be without ever hooking up the linkage. I'm confident with where I'm at with this linkage. We're gonna be fairly close on the first one. And then I'm gonna show you how to sync one to the other so you have matching servos. And we're gonna make this linkage the same as the other one. So mechanically everything and electrically everything else can be the same. And if I have to make a small tweak adjustment, I can either come back and reprogram or I can do it with the radio. But hopefully everything else is symmetrical and I'm not trying to tune out a bunch of garbage because the thing will be well built. So these are D, or I'm sorry, B series servos. We're gonna go ahead and find the servo port and you're gonna plug in here. And this works on anything that you need. It doesn't need to be this big or elaborate um, as far as a project goes. We are going to go over to um, the B and we're gonna select it. And it's gonna try and communicate with the servo. It'll be loading up the information. And you can see what comes in here as far as a neutral and endpoint adjustments on both ends. You can set the direction, the dead bandwidth, the speed. You can slow it down, the fail safes if you want to. You can scroll down to the soft set. So that means when you power the plane up, it doesn't jerk the surface back. It slowly comes up. You can set the percentage of that soft start too. So primarily a lot of what you're going to use are clockwise, counterclockwise, and then center and endpoint adjustments. We're going to go into there now. So you're going to go ahead and push the um, adjust dial in and they're going to have you turn the pulse thing. And when you get, when you're turning the pulse thing is where you want to be careful. We want to get that thing into center. You don't want to go nuts on this dial because that's when you wind up going all over the place and you have problems. So right now we're going to go ahead and set center on this. And what I am going to look at, now that I have my servo arms, you can look, I look at the servo arm location at the bottom of the servo. It's a very telling tail right there. And if you will, you'll notice how that is um, off center at the bottom. I use that reference as an eyeball more or less. And that's probably the most accurate way to get center. And I'll let you see that right there. So I'm gonna to go to neutral. Try and get this wire out of the way. And I'm going to tap the neutral button. And now that lets me set my neutral or my center position. And all I'm looking at is that arm reference on the very bottom to see when it's spaced center against that servo. And I would say right there is absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna come back in here, I'm set at 2153, and I'm gonna tap the scroll wheel. And now that sets it, and I'm gonna go and set my endpoints at left and right. So the first one I'm gonna set is my left, and I'm gonna go ahead and tap that one. And it's going to have me pulse left. This is where you need to be very careful. Go slow. This pulse dial, the better the servos the um, more touchy it is. If you just grab this thing and yank it and turn it a half a turn, you're gonna be in trouble because you're gonna see how quickly that moved. You're never gonna react quick enough to that and you're gonna smash it. So what I'm looking for here, if I quit bumping the camera, 
is I wanna set my end point adjustment on the pull side, typically first when you have a horn, something like this. I don't want it crushing that servo surface or that uh, horizontal stab surface with my servo. And all I'm going to do is keep turning this dial till I get this thing close. But remember with wind deflection and stuff, it may push it a little bit more, I hope not. But I wanna get it close, but not enough to crush it. I think I wanna back it off just a little bit right there. So I am at negative 54 and we're gonna tap the dial. That locks in negative 54. And now I'm gonna scroll down to the right side Hit enter, and now they're gonna ask me to pulse it back to the right, and again, I'm gonna do this slowly. All right, now you can see where I am there. And what I typically try and do here is I match throws from one side to another. And that way, if I have to reverse the other side, the other servo, the adjustments are the same. Now you can look at that deflection and that throw. That's an awful lot of throw right there. If I need more, I have more because the hinge line here, that gap is gonna determine my stopping points as well as the linkage. And I think I'm fairly maxed out there anyway. So we're gonna go with a negative 53 and a 53. And now I'm just going to hit the scroll wheel to lock it into place. Now negative 54 and 53. Okay, so let's be picky. I'm gonna make it exactly 54 just because we can. And remember, this thing's super touchy. There's 55, you just gotta breathe on it. 54, we're gonna lock it in there. Now we're gonna hit back. All right, so now you can see where my endpoint, my neutral settings and stuff are right there. All right, let me make sure the camera's gonna pick this up. I'm gonna show you how crazy this is. So from here, you're gonna unplug the servo here, and you are going to plug it in to sync. So that's your reference. You notice how that came back to center. I'm gonna bring over my other surface, and this one's not even hooked up. And I'm gonna take this one, we're gonna put this one, the new one into servo. We're gonna go ahead and hit that. We're gonna pulse back into the center. So there is 2154. Go right back into there. So 54 and 54 set. We can hit back there, 21, or so we got negative 54, 21, 54, 54, and we'll exit out and that saves it, all right? So now we can go ahead and unplug these. And if you wanna prove this out, you can now. So we're gonna just take this one and we'll hook it up all by itself in the servo port, hit B, and you'll see that it's gonna load the data. 54, negative 54, 21, 54, and 54. Exactly what we wanted. Back out, we're gonna bring this one in. We'll set that one up there. Negative 54, 21, 54, and 54. So perfectly matched endpoints and center points now. We'll go ahead and back up and we'll take that one out. And as far as your linkage goes, we're gonna cheat a little bit and I'm literally going to take this tool because we have our surface was centered right here. We know that we're, our surface was centered out here. So I know that's good. I'm going to just take a uh, veneer caliper and you don't even need numbers here guys, if you don't want to. Take the dial and twist it on the top so it's locked. And I'm gonna take my other elevator linkage and all I am going to do is place it in the inset of here and see what I have to do to make that the right size. So this one's off a little bit. Gonna get my other arm. And when this thing is powered back up, I am going to go ahead and install these in center on the servo and install my linkages. And guys, we should be dead on side to side.
So there's our linkage setup. A um, couple changes that'll come down the road. We're gonna get some carbon fiber flexible sheets from RJX Hobby and we're gonna cover them up and I'm gonna cut them slots so they look nice and they fill all this in and it looks really clean. Um, we use some anodized washers. I stole that idea from my buddy Ronnie, but I have to get the screws there coming from uh, far reaches of Asia as we speak, but that'll clean up the way that looks. So there is some still changes here to be made, but as far as adjustments, guys, and true, it doesn't get any better than that. And I just kept this thing on my little cheapy uh, servo tester for now, but these things are awesome. It's like flippers, like a dolphin. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, that's how that goes, baby. Look at that. And that's in cycle mode. So, um, awesome. And there you have it, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed that. I hope it was beneficial to you. If you liked it, please make sure you give me a thumbs up. Uh, it always helps out the channel. If you didn't, there's always that thumbs down button. Make sure you hit that twice for me. Like, share, subscribe, all that cool stuff. You guys are also just playing crazy. Peace out. Happy flights.